Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Stiles, and I am the Program Officer for Chinese on the Critical Language Scholarship, and that is administered by American Councils for International Education. And I have been with American Councils now for about three years. I started off as a resident director at our site in Suzhou, which is uh, not a site that we're running any longer, but, um, but that was my introduction to the program. So I got to see things from that perspective and uh, to work with students on the program. And it was a wonderful experience. And then after that, I then came on board in Washington DC as a program officer. And so this, uh, this next summer will be my fourth summer then working on the program. So um, I'm excited about it. Um, I'm sure everybody's also wondering, are we going to do this? Are we going to be doing this program in person? And if that doesn't happen because of the pandemic, um, what is going to be the backup plan? And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. So we will we'll get a chance to, to go over some of those things. And also, uh, we'll have a Q&A at the very end. So you're going to have a chance to, to ask some questions, and we'll be happy to answer for you. But at this time, I'd like to also introduce my co-host today, which is Eric Brink. And Eric participated in our program in 2019 in Changchun. And I'll let Eric introduce himself and talk a little bit about that. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eric Brink. I'm an alum of the 2019 program in Changchun, China. Um, I just graduated with a BA in Spanish with minors in Chinese and criminal justice. Um, right now I'm in Michigan, hanging out at home. Um, I am going through the federal hiring process, but everything is slowed down right now. So I'm just at a temp job waiting for that. And yes, and I think we can all understand the, the, the feeling of, of things being a bit on hold. And that has definitely been the case uh, for, for many programs, uh, especially study abroad programs. Um, and also just uh, to let everybody know, I've, I've also have studied Chinese myself. I did a, a Boren way back in 2007. So I have done um, study abroad programs and am familiar with that. And so it is, of course, something that I, I value very highly, as I'm sure that everyone here does. And so I'm really excited to get to share about this program with you today. Um, and, I'm, and I'm also excited to have Eric share a bit more about specifically about his CLS experience with you just a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So for today's program, we're going to start with an overview of the CLS program, including some more specific details about our Chinese program. And then we'll hear about Eric. Uh, we'll, we'll hear from Eric about his experience on the program. And at the end of this presentation, we will then open it up for questions, as I just mentioned. And so, if you have any questions, please do enter them into the Q and A box that you see in Zoom. And so, you're welcome to add questions there at any time throughout the presentation. Um, again, we won't be stopping at any point until we get to the end of the presentation. But please feel free to add questions as we go along. Um, and then uh, we will answer those questions. And you're also welcome to direct questions specifically uh, toward Eric if you want to hear more about uh, his experience or his perspective being on the ground with the program uh, with CLS. So with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the presentation. So first of all, the CLS program is a fully funded summer study abroad program. It supports US students in all fields of study um, and these are, this is to, to learn what the US Department of State refers to as critical languages. So Chinese is one of the 15 languages that is offered through the CLS program. Probably the most exciting thing about the CLS program is that it is fully funded by the US government. So that means that students don't have any out-of-pocket costs except for the cost of a passport application if you don't already have a passport. There all also is a medical exam required as part of our medical review process. And so what is covered by the program is domestic travel from each participant's home in the US to Washington DC for a pre-departure orientation, as well as round trip international airfare to your program site where it's not so much airfare, but, uh, but group travel is arranged for everyone. And um, the program also covers any applicable visa fees. Not all sites require a visa, but many do, um, and China certainly does. And uh, it also covers the cost of tuition, room and board, cultural excursions, and activities in the host country. Now, alumni of the program receive undergradu undergraduate credit through Bryn Mawr College, as well as a certified ACTFL, or ACTFL for short. The ACTFL OPI test, uh, and that is an oral interview 
where you get a certificate that certifies what your score is on the actual scale. Now, I think it's easy to see why Chinese is in such high demand with booming economies all over the world in locations such as Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, and of course, China, um, all featuring Mandarin Chinese as a key component, or at least they were bo booming until things kind of came on hold, but I, I, I do believe that uh, a pandemic, pandemic is a temporary situation. So uh, certainly Mandarin is going to be very much in demand in the future. So as technology continues to connect the East and the West, more Americans are learning Chinese in order to engage effectively in the global marketplace and pursue international careers in diverse fields such as archaeology, finance, sociology, and medicine. The CLS program teaches students Mandarin Chinese while also providing opportunities for students to engage with China's diverse local culture. The CLS program is taught in Mandarin, so not Cantonese at this point, um, and simplified characters are used as the standard for instruction at all CLS Chinese institutes. Uh, for students who have been studying traditional characters, you're also welcome to apply and may continue studying traditional characters concurrently with simplified characters. It is beneficial to students to be able to read simplified characters since these are predominantly used around the world in publications and correspondence. Um, there may be individual instances where you can submit homework in traditional characters if, that is your, if that's your preference, um, but that's really worked out on a case-by-case case, case case basis with uh, the institutes and the teachers. The CLS Chinese program is open to students at approximately the intermediate level. So to be eligible for Chinese, students are required to have completed the equivalent of two academic years of prior study at the university level. While many students meet these requirements through formal classes at the college level, you may substitute other language learning experience for formal classes, such as self-study, tutoring, high school coursework, or knowledge of the language from your home environment. There is a space in the application for you to describe your experience and how it meets the proficiency requirement for the level which you are applying. In any case, you must have a plan to meet the requirement by the beginning of June when the CLS program starts. Um, previous study does not need to appear on an academic transcript, but you do need to be at the appropriate level. So it is definitely at your benefit to not try and game the system. We do have tips on our website to help you determine what level you should apply based on your experience. Um, and also just as a side note, each of our sites generally offers levels ranging from intermediate through advanced. And then of course there are different gradations of that within each of those levels. Now keep in mind that the CLS program is more than just a funding opportunity. It is an all inclusive study abroad program focused on immersive language learning. Each of our partner institutes hosts up to 30 CLS scholars and facilitates an intensive eight week program for students that includes 20 classroom hours or language instruction each week, cultural activities, local excursions, and one or two weekend overnight trips. The program is academically challenging and every aspect is designed to maximize language gains and your immersion in the host culture. Throughout the summer, students agree to speak only in the language they are studying, even though this can be very challenging for students who have never, never studied in an immersive language environment previously. And Eric will have a chance to testify to that a little bit later on in this presentation. Um, each student is assigned a language partner for practice outside of the classroom, which they will meet regularly with every week throughout the program. Um, and language partners are constantly given rave reviews by our participants as a really, uh, a really especially productive part of the, of the program. So students tend to build long-term relationships with their language partners, um, and it's, they are just a, a, a great way to be able to apply what you've learned in the classroom and also to explore topics that you may be interested in. Um, so talking more specifically about the CLS Chinese program, in the 2019 CLS program, we had sites in Changchun at the College of Humanities and Sciences of Northeast Normal University, or CHSNENU, and that is where Eric uh, completed his CLS program. We also have a program in Dalian at the Dalian University of Technology. And we have a program in Tainan in Taiwan at National Chenggong University, or NCKU. And we have a program in Xi'an at Shanxi Normal University, SNNU. 
Um, so th th those are the four sites we have covered in the past, uh, in the past few years. And we don't anticipate that would change in 2021. But of course, as everyone knows, the situation with the pandemic is fluid. Um, and there, there, it is possible there could be changes, just so everybody is aware. Um, students don't get to choose the site at which they are placed. And that's an important thing I'd like to emphasize. So, but rather, CLS will place students at each site based on a variety of factors. The reason for this is that it's important for CLS cohorts to be balanced according to a variety of factors, such as the field of study, university levels, Chinese language levels, experience studying or traveling abroad, and other facets that allow for diverse perspectives that re represent the US as broadly as possible. All sites will have a variety of cultural excursions, typically two excursions locally and one overnight excursion to a more distant destination. An example of an excursion is shown here, where you can see in this photo, uh, where students visited a pastry factory and had the opportunity to make their own Chinese desserts or a ten pin, as they're called in Chinese, while learning about the company's business model and manufacturing process. Other excursions may involve traveling to a place of other historic or cultural significance, such as a village or a temple. And actually, let's, uh, let's have Eric share a bit about a cultural excursion he experienced while in Changchun. So Eric, can you let us know about your, maybe your favorite excursion while you were there in Changchun? Yeah, so I think all of our excursions were really great. Um, I guess for my favorite, I might pick the retirement home. Um, so it might seem kind of insignificant or maybe you wouldn't want to go to a retirement home. Um, and I kind of thought that at first too, but it ended up being really valuable. Um, we got to hear about the, the history and hear about different viewpoints of the older generation and just how amazed they were that we were there wanting to learn their culture. And it ended up being really fun. We got to do arts and crafts with them. Um, I had an old woman teach me how to play pool the proper way. Um, and at the end, they put on a talent show for us. And that was really fun to watch. And our resident director even got up and sang karaoke. And maybe a little embarrassing for him, but it was fun for us. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And, and that's a a good point that you bring up with these excursions is they may not always be like a visit to some sort of historically or culturally significant site. It might be an opportunity to connect with people living in the host community and to hear a bit more about their stories and, uh, and just to connect with them at a personal level. All right, so um, for the CLS Chinese Institutes, language partners are typically Chinese students who are studying at the institutions which hosts the CLS program. In some instances, the, these may be students interested in teaching Chinese in the future, while in other instances, they will be students of varying study backgrounds. So typically CLS students will be matched with language partners according to common interests to the degree that this is possible. Um, we don't always get a perfect match, but we, uh, but, or our, our institutes are the ones that match students actually. We don't always get a perfect match, but they definitely do their best. Um, and it usually works out pretty well. Depending on the site where students are placed, they may either be placed with host families throughout the program, or in, in some instances, they will stay in dorms and be assigned Chinese speaking roommates. All students living at a particular site will have the same living arrangements. So either everyone at that site will be staying with host families or everyone will stay in dorms with Chinese roommates. And I'd like to actually kick it right back over to Eric. Uh, Eric, can you share a little bit about your experience living with a Chinese roommate in Changchun? I actually had a really good experience. Um, it was kind of awkward at first. I think that was just new roommate jitters in general. Um, but we ended up getting along really well. We both kind of were quiet. We liked our downtime. Um, but he ended up being a really valuable friend as well as language partner slash roommate um, slash ambassador, really. Um, when we would go out, I felt comfortable going out with him and asking questions, but then he was really fond of pushing me to try to do it myself. So if we went out and I didn't know what to order, he, he would make me go do it myself instead of relying on him, which was really good. Um, and we ended up pretty much every night watching a TV show together before bed. And 
it was really fun and he was always willing to stop if I had a question, but we would just joke around and we got along really well. Thanks, Eric. And yeah, and, and I think that, you know, we find that students oftentimes build long-term relationships with their roommates and their language partners, uh, and they'll stay in contact with them after the program. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not without any challenges. You're, we are kind of dealing with a situation here where uh, people are coming from different cultural backgrounds and maybe different living habits. And that can be a thing on program, but that's also a part, and I think a value of the program is part of that opportunity for cultural learning. So, and of course, we, we talk to students about these possibilities and we go through case studies and role plays and all sorts of things to prepare students for things to anticipate and whatnot before the program begins. Um, but I, I also, uh, kind of moving on here to a different topic, I want to just point out that we are all aware of the impact of COVID-19 on study abroad. So it is important to note that depending on health and safety considerations, it may be necessary to hold some or all of the 2021 CLS institutes virtually. That's not something we're anticipating at this point. We are moving forward uh, with the expectation that we're going to have in-person in programs, but as we all know, the situation is fluid and it is changing constantly, so we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we are prepared to hold the institutes virtually. Um, so in, that, in, the, in the event that the institutes are virtual, uh, the instruction would follow a similar structure, emphasizing use of the language, cultural learning, uh, building relationships between our scholars and the people of the host country. And even if some institutes are held in person, it is possible there may be changes to the standard program to accommodate safety measures, such as quarantines, social distancing, or other measures. Um, for example, students may need to stay in dorms rather than with host families, uh, particularly if there are restrictions imposed by the host country government or the institution itself. So that's just something that uh, I'm sure everyone is wondering about and they're thinking about. And so I just want to let everybody know that there are contingency plans that we are working on. Uh, and those, it may be a virtual program or it may be working with these kinds of restrictions for an in-person program. And, uh, and of course, you're welcome to ask further questions about that at the end of this presentation. All right, so moving on. Uh, in addition to the opportunity to study abroad and take language classes on a fully funded program, there are a lot of benefits that come from participating in the CLS program. Students on CLS make substantial gains in their language proficiency over the course of one summer and proficiency in a critical language opens doors to further academic and employment opportunities in all fields. And there's quite a bit of research to back that up, which uh, we, you can find out more about actually on our website. Um, studying, uh, studying abroad can also help you develop and hone skills that are really desirable for employers like problem solving, flexibility, and adaptability. All of these things will help you stand out to employers to give you an edge in an increasingly competitive and globalized job market. Um, and it's definitely becoming uh, that much more competitive in the current climate. Uh, because of the immersive nature of the CLS program, participants also have unique opportunities to build meaningful relationships in their host communities, as I mentioned, with friends and colleagues from the host country and peers in their CLS cohorts, who come uh, from all over the United States. And that's not something that we talked a whole lot about. Um, as everyone is aware, I think that you would be going to the host country with a cohort of up to 30 students. Um, and that is also an opportunity for networking, for building friendships, um, and also for solving issues that come up due to cultural differences. Because as we know, the US is also culturally diverse and you'll be with a group of students from very different backgrounds and perspectives. Uh, alumni of the program join a vibrant and engaged community of U.S. Department of State International Exchange alumni and gain access to resources and events supported by the CLS program. And while CLS participants have no service commitment to the U.S. government after completion of the program, alumni do in fact receive a certificate of non-competitive eligibility for federal employment. It's also sometimes referred to as NCE. Um, so basically it gives you a leg up in the federal hiring process. So the CLS application is available online now at clscholarship.org slash apply. And I think we have that on this slide here. Sorry, I moved forward too quickly. Uh, if anybody wants to write that down, if you haven't been there already, and that is 
uh, pretty easy to remember, www.clscholarship.org slash apply. And the deadline is November 17th of this year at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So definitely keep the time zone in mind, but we uh, don't advise anyone to wait till the last minute. It's always best to apply uh, with plenty of time to spare because uh, when applications are all rolling in at the same time, that can clog up the server. And uh, that can mean some applications won't be admitted after the deadline. And in those cases, we cannot accept late applications. All right, so uh, you can apply for only one language, and, but please keep in mind that you're applying for a language rather than a specific program site or a country. Okay, so again, you're applying for a language, not a country. You will be placed at a site after you have been uh, accepted into the program or if you become a finalist. But, uh, and also keep in mind that you are only able to apply for one language at a time. So students who apply for more than one language, uh, that those applications will be disqualified. So please keep that in mind that you may only apply for one language at a time. Applicants are also required to submit an unofficial transcript and one recommendation. Four short essays and a statement of purpose form the core of the application. So that is your chance to shine. All right, so we're going to now move on and I'm going to turn things over to Eric for a bit to talk to you a bit more about his experience while on the CLS program in Changchun, China in the summer of 2019. Eric, it's all yours. All right, so I was really lucky to have been accepted to the CLS program. Um, I heard about it my junior year of high school and was accepted my junior year of college. So it was a pretty long-term goal that I was working towards. Um, I really have always loved learning foreign languages and I didn't have a ton of access to them where I grew up. Um, I started learning Chinese for one semester in high school online and I didn't learn a thing, but I liked it enough to want to try again in, in college. And I was going through and I really thought that I would never be ready to study abroad. I was just not good enough at speaking and, and, and stuff and too shy or whatever, but I finally felt that I was ready. And so I applied and talked about how going to China and having that experience and practicing being a citizen ambassador would really help advance my career. Um, whether I'm in the United States or overseas. And I think some of the greatest benefits of CLS, obviously the language practice, the friends, but um, personal growth as well. I think it really builds, you come out a different person. Um, it builds your confidence when you are starving and you just, you have to order food or you're gonna starve and you set yourself goals and you learn how to get through not having control over everything. And you come out a little more assertive and a little more globally oriented. Um, it was wonderful to go and see um, how the media that I was exposed to before I went was totally different from what it is. And I think especially that had to do with living in the dorms that you never see this side that these are young adults that are exactly the same as you. Um, they go out, they listen to music, they study for tests. It's, it's amazing how similar it is and we're halfway across the world and we don't even know. All right, thank you, Eric. And so moving on here, uh, I just wanna point out that successful applicants for the CLS program do come from a wide range of backgrounds and are excited to represent the diversity of the United States abroad. And that may include students with a lot of experience traveling abroad, or you may be like Eric, where it was your first time to China. Um, the program places emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academic program and the intensive nature of the program. So it's, the essays will give you an opportunity to talk about how you are prepared. 
So in your application, it is important to show that you can succeed on the CLS program. That includes addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting where you are not making all of the decisions, and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should know that you are motivated to pursue language study and that you will continue your studies after the return, after you return to the United States. So it's important to show that you will continue to study the language once you have completed the CLS program. Um, so the program is not so much an opportunity to, to get to experience whether or not you like learning the language, but more to, uh, you, at, this, at this stage, you should already have demonstrated that you have a commitment to learning the language. This doesn't mean that your campus has to offer courses in the language that you choose, but you should have a plan for how you're going to continue learning and using the language in the future. Um, and I think Eric can share a little bit about that later, about some ways that you can, you can do that if your university doesn't offer courses specifically. Um, but, I, but I can tell you that many students do find uh, a tutor to do that, or they'll find online resources. And of course, in, with many things going into a virtual setting, there are increasing opportunities to study languages virtually. Um, and finally, you've got to make clear your connection between the language you wish to study and your academic or professional career goals. Um, so we, we understand, you know, we, we understand that not everybody's going to have a, a clear idea of what they're going to do after they graduate, and that's okay. Um, if you can connect it to more to your more immediate academic goals, that's okay. It also kind of depends on where you are in, in your studies. If you are uh, in going into the program as a fresh as a freshman, which is rarer, but it is possible, um, then then you're not as ex expected to as have uh, as clear an idea of what you're going to do after you graduate. But of course, if you are a senior, then you should definitely have something more worked out in terms of what you plan to do in the future. So again, the application is open right now, and it's available online at clscholarship.org slash apply. Your application has to be submitted no later than 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific time or 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, November 17th. Every year, every year we do have students who try to submit their application at the very last minute, and they unfortunately miss the deadline. So please don't let this be you. There's plenty of time to do it and definitely get that application in early. Um, in January, every applicant will be notified of whether or not they will advance to the semi semifinal round of selection. This notification is done by email, so make sure you include a valid email address in your application and check your spam filters. I also want to point out that there's, uh, there are slots for a primary and an alternate email address. So I strongly, strongly advise you to put both of those email addresses there so that we can get a hold of you just in case something happens with your email address, which has happened in the past. And it's a, it sure is a shame when we can't get a hold of students. Those who advance to the semifinal round can expect to be notified in early March whether they have been selected for the award or chosen to be an alternate. Students who are selected for the award will have about two weeks to either accept or decline the offer. And then alternates are then promoted on an on a rolling basis, depending on how many finalists decline their awards or how many uh, may decide to withdraw from the program prior to the, when the program starts. All right, so thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Eric and I at this time are gonna go through questions in the order that they have come through the Q&A window. Uh, but we also want to point out the contact information that you see on the screen right now, just in case anybody has to go or, and has questions and isn't, isn't able to stick around. Uh, you can call or email us if you have questions about the program or the application. We've also put a lot of time into creating resources for applicants. So we do encourage you to visit the clscholarship.org website. Um, you can go to clscholarship.org slash applicants, as you see on the screen, and read through the information provided there. More often than not, you're going to find that you, your question has been answered uh, because we've gotten a lot of these questions in the past and so uh, we've been able to compile a list of the most common ones. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to, into some questions. We have quite a few. Oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to point out one more thing. We are active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So definitely feel free to follow us for updates uh, and there's, you, you'll also be able to see uh, various posts about past programs, um, including our virtual program just this past summer. Uh, 